Hi, and welcome to today's construction class. We'll be looking at the construction of a logo for riding stables. All right. So the point A B is actually half part of a parabola, and we are going to construct that first of all. Right. Okay, so we know that the height of the parabola is what is 145, 145, 145, all right. Then the span, the span is what 52 plus 52, that's what that's 104, which is this. So with this now, I can develop my what my parabola. Span so this area. Okay, now so these are point A. These are point S. So remember our AS is what is 104, and these are point what these are point B. So to develop my parabola, I'm going to use uh, the division of line technique to actually divide each of the spaces there. And remember, it's half part of a parabola. It's a semi-parabola, half, not a full. Okay, so I've been, I've been using the division of line technique to divide the spaces here. This area into six equal parts, and this area into six equal parts. So the next uh, procedure is to draw uh, the vertical lines here, the vertical line along the point which is divided on this horizontal plane. We draw a vertical line downward. Okay, and point one. This is it here, then downward on point two, on point three, and on point five. Okay, so let me just say this if you don't know how to divide a line using a uh, division of line method, kindly check uh, my YouTube page. I have a video on that. Thank you. The next thing is for us to get our uh, the point which our parabola is going to actually pick. So from point zero to down there, all right. And this is the spot it's going to take from point zero to two, right. So this is the spot it's going to pick from point zero to three. Yeah. So it's going to take this spot from point zero to four. Yeah, it's going to take this spot from point zero to five. It's going to take uh, this spot then the last uh, from point zero to six, right here. All right. So having done that, we are going to draw out our curve here, our parabolic curve, right, using a flexible curve or a French curve. Right, so we have our parabolic curve now. So what else do we develop? Let's develop the ellipse. Yeah, to develop our ellipse, we are told that the distance from B, from B downward is what is mark 38. So take note of that mark 38. This is 38. Then, then the distance of B towards point L here is what is 10 mm, and this is 10 mm. So I'm getting the point, we draw them out. Right, we are told that this area is point what point F. That's our first focal point. And take note, the line that is projected from F is at what at angle 45 degrees. So let's do that now. All right. So take note of this point F1 on the ellipse. Yeah, so the midpoint of that ellipse is what is 51. So that signifies that from the midpoint of that ellipse to point F itself is going to go, it's going to be 51 also. So let's mark out those points now. Okay, so the points have been marked down, all right. So this area now is our what is our F1. Is our F1. So we need to 
uh, develop the ellipse now. Okay, the line from the center line is drawn also at angle what angle 45, so we have to make it perpendicular to each other. All right. So from the picture, we are told that our minor axis is what our minor axis is 32. So all we have to do is to reduce our major axis. But first of all, let's get our minor axis, which is what 32, and this is mark 32 here. All right. So we do the same thing downwards. Mark 32. All right. These are mark 32. So how do we get our major axis? If you don't know this, try and watch my YouTube video on construction of ellipse using focal point method. You are going to understand this concept, all right? So in that scenario, let me denote this place at point C, this area as point D, then you understand. So this CD is going to be my minor axis. So to get my major axis, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to place my compass at either point C or D, then extend it to either focal point 1 or focal point 2. I'm going to extend my own to focal point. So I haven't done that. I'm now going to place my compass at the center of the ellipse. You understand? Then any dimension I'm getting on the horizontal plane here is my what? Uh, is my major axis. So I'm going to use uh, the auxiliary circle method to develop this ellipse. Right, so then my minor axis also. So I'm dividing this into 12 equal halves. So I'm just going to develop this half of the ellipse because that's the only area I need. All right, okay, in this manner. Right. Okay. All right. So I'm having my first point here. I'm having my second point here. My third point is right here. My last point here. So all I need to do is with my uh, French curve or my flexible, I'm going to just develop just half of this ellipse here, half of it. Right. So that is our ellipse. That is our ellipse. So point E, yeah, this junction is called point E, all right? And the radius of the circle here is 12. So I've measured 12. So from point E, I strike an arc with radius 12. Then placing at that junction there, I'm going to draw my circle now, all right? So I'm... From point S here, it is tangential to this circle. Tangential, all right. I'm going to draw the tangent, all right. So wherever it touches, it is point what point R, point R. So that being said, to on F1 here, so I'm going to draw the circle that connects this F naught to the tip of the ellipse, all right. All right. So that circle is also done. So what next? Since we need to develop our ellipse up to this level here, so I've gotten the point. All I need is just what draw it out all right so i've drawn this latter part of this ellipse so we said uh this junction is point point t so from b to t is what is tangential to each other all right all right that's it tangential to each other so i haven't done that i haven't done that so let's develop uh this part of here so let me i told that half of this area is what is point 52 0.52, which is this. Uh, I'm gotten that. We are told that the height upwards to get our point P is what is 16. All right, 16. Marking my 16. Marking our 16. Drawing a faint line across it. Then on this, our point 52. Projecting it downwards. Yeah, projecting it downwards. All right. So 
this area P of PS2, get the curve here. So I'm going to bisect AP. So I'm going to bisect point AP now. So I've bisected uh, AP. Right. Bisecting AP is my bisection line. So wherever this bisection line meets with the straight line which you draw down here, all right? So that is your point of intersection. You place your compass there and what and draw out the arc, all right? So uh, point APS has been taken. And I told you earlier, I said you bisect point AP or PS. After bisecting it, you draw the bisector. You understand? You draw a straight line joining the bisector. So by the time the straight line comes from the bisector, where it intersects with the straight line coming from P, that's your midpoint. Then you place it there and what? And you draw your, you draw your arc. So next is to get point uh, BL. Yeah, the ellipse at the top here. That's our next uh, thing to do. So point B to L is what is 35, which is this. So from there and we develop our ellipse. Okay, so BL, BL is the major axis, all right, for that particular ellipse. So to get the minor axis, yeah, junction O to L for the major. I'm using auxiliary centimeter, all right. Then this same junction to major axis. So this junction here is our what is our point M. All right. So from uh, the center here, yeah, to this area point M, that's what that's the minor. And I'm drawing the circle for for the minor axis. So I'm developing the helix using, using the auxiliary circle uh, method. So these are the points for our elliptic curve. So let me use my French curve to bring it out now. All right. So then we want to bring this question from here to here. To here. So. Kindly ensure you subscribe to this YouTube channel and refer it to your friends who might be in need of it. Thank you.